इमेजिन अ पेशेंट इज बींग गिवन असिस्टेड ब्रीदिंग और असिस्टेड वेंटिलेशन इज ऑन वेंटिलेटर एंड यू वॉन्ट टू कैलकुलेट दी अल्वियोलर पी ओ टू यू विल यूज दी अल्वियोलर एयर इक्वेशन एंड एन इंपॉर्टेंट कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ द अल्वियोलर एयर इक्वेशन इज आर दैट इज रेस्पिरेटरी कोशंट और कंसिडर ए डायबिटिक पेशेंट यू वुड वॉन्ट टू नो वॉट इज द मेटाबॉलिक स्टेटस ऑफ द पेशेंट वेदर कार्बोहाइड्रेट मेटाबोलिज्म फैट मेटाबोलिज्म वेर इट इज टेटिंग एक्सेट्रा यू कैन डू इट बाय फर्स्ट कैलकुलेटिंग द रेस्पिरेटरी कोशंट ऑफ द पेशेंट और कंसिडर द एथलीट हु इज परफॉर्मिंग सीवियर इंटेंस एक्सरसाइज यू वुड वॉन्ट टू नो हाउ मच ऑक्सीजन इज बींग कंज्यूम्ड how much carbon dioxide is being liberated you will calculate respiratory quotient so lots of uh, clinical applications uh, to this particular entity therefore in a quick discussion let's understand what this respiratory quotient is but before we proceed further don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, by subscribing you will get daily mcqs daily conceptual videos and periodically we are going to announce the quiz contest with grand prizes to win all right so let's come to the academic content what is respiratory quotient see the name itself is indicative respiration means uh, o2 is consumed and co2 is liberated so respiratory quotient is defined as the co2 volume evolved per oxygen volume consumed that ratio is called as uh, respiratory quotient point number 1 and this is happening per unit time let's say per minute how much oxygen volume entirely is being consumed and how much co2 is being evolved uh the normal value is 0.8 and uh, we are basically looking at the alveolar air we are looking at the ventilation at the level of lungs alveoli that is oxygen in inspired it goes through the alveoli reaches the pulmonary blood and then it goes to the tissues where oxygen is used and co2 is evolved or liberated as a metabolic end product in the presence of nutrients and oxygen there is going to be metabolism and co2 is liberated so uh, this ratio of how much o2 is being consumed in the body and how much co2 is being liberated is the uh, is the respiratory uh, quotient but don't forget we will uh, will be focusing at the alveolar level as to how much oxygen is going in per unit time and how much co2 is coming out and liberated uh, i mean evolved and expelled out per unit time all right now that being said and also the normal value of 0.8 now let us see the factors that will influence the respiratory quotient and therefore will provide you certain information starting with of course the diet it's simple i mean uh, just now we said that the nutrients are metabolized in the presence of oxygen and the co2 is liberated so obviously nutrients would be the determining factor as to how much oxygen is being consumed and how much co2 is liberated so for instance carbohydrate rich diet and the respiratory quotient becomes 1.0 it increases whereas fat rich diet and the quotient decreases it becomes 0.7 uh, for the sake of logic the fats are uh, always metabolized aerobically there is no anaerobic metabolism of the fat so if they are bur being burnt aerobically in the presence of oxygen they will consume relatively more oxygen which is in the denominator and relatively less carbon dioxide relatively less carbon dioxide will be liberated and therefore with fat rich diet when the fats are being burnt or metabolized the respiratory quotient is 0.7 so you can uh, judge whether the fats are being burnt or not for, uh, for instance after an intense exercise or when uh, weight be, weight loss is being attempted this will be an important indicator uh, mixed diet or protein rich diet the uh, ratio uh, remains 
what are the other factors that uh, influence the quotient pulmonary ventilation obviously it's going to be an important factor because it all boils down to how much ventilation is happening so that how much co2 is expelled out and how much oxygen is taken in and therefore pulmonary ventilation is an important influencer uh, there are conditions like rise in the body temperature and therefore the ventilation has increased or fluctuations in the h plus levels uh, if the h plus increases it stimulates the ventilation via peripheral chemoreceptor stimulation and therefore it will alter the uh, respiratory quotient so let's see Hi uh, voluntary hyperpnea yes if there is hyperpnea and that too let's say voluntarily what will happen more and more co2 will be expelled out of the alveoli more and more co2 will diffuse from blood into the alveolus and will be liberated for not a corresponding rise in the o2 consumption there would not be a corresponding increase in the denominator that is o2 uh, consumed but there will be a rise in the co2 uh, being expelled out that means the respiratory quotient will be higher it will increase same thing what happens in the case of acidemia uh, whenever there are acids increased acids they are going to stimulate the ventilation via peripheral chemoreceptor stimulation and when the ventilation is stimulated again the same uh, point increased co2 being liberated in the alveoli for the same amount of o2 being consumed and therefore um, the respiratory quotient will be higher it will increase on the contrary uh, or conversely if there is alkalosis a condition of alkalosis then the co2 is actually retained in the body look uh, acidosis stimulates the ventilation alkalosis depresses the ventilation and if the ventilation is depressed co2 gets retained in the body and if the co2 is retained less co2 is reaching the alveoli and being expelled out as we have said it's all about how much co2 is being expelled out at the level of lungs so if the co2 is retained in the body less co2 is reaching the alveoli and expelled out and therefore numerator co2 is less expelled in the condition of alkalosis and therefore the respiratory quotient is less so clinically speaking it may provide you some information uh, some relevant important information okay uh, what about intense violent exercise during the exercise there is generation of the lactic acid uh, because of the very intense exercise mitochondria will not be able to generate atps that fast and therefore there will be anaerobic glycolysis lactic acid will be generated lactic acid or h plus now these hydrogen ions they combine with hco3 minus in the blood to form h2co3 which then forms the co2 and h2o so more co2 is generated and more co2 being expelled out via alveoli so numerator is higher again and respiratory quotient is higher during violent intense exercise but remember what happen what happens after the exercise uh, where well, during the exercise the respiratory quotient reaches 2.0 from a normal value of 0.8 it, it's 2.0 but after the exercise is over uh, something will happen in the reverse that is after the exercise is over co2 gets retained in the body you know why because uh, in the blood it needs to reform those alkalies which were consumed during the exercise remember we said h plus uh, had to combine with hco3 minus so alkalies were consumed during the exercise now they have to be reformed after the exercise is over so co2 is retained in the body it will give some h plus to this uh, and uh, to reform the hco3 minus so co2 is not reaching the alveoli it is retained in the body plus there is oxygen debt that is more and more oxygen is consumed after the exercise is over so numerator is less in the alveolus and denominator is more and therefore uh, after the exercise is over respiratory quotient will fall to a very low value 
it might reach 0 0.7, 0 0.6, etc. Finally, what about diabetes? You know, diabetes uh, is a metabolic disorder and it's the glucose metabolism, carbohydrate metabolism, which is primarily affected. So what happens is there is less assimilation and dissimulation of the glucose and more and more assimilation, dissimulation or metabolic tilt is towards the fats. And uh, you know, when the fats are being metabolized more and more, the respiratory quotient is 0 0.7. So in diabetic patients also, it can provide you certain valuable information. That's the importance of this particular indicator, the respiratory quotient.